In this video, I'm going to show you how to design woodworking projects in SketchUp. Believe me, this is easier than you think. People overcomplicate this. I'm going to show you right now how to do that. So in this video, we're going to build this coffee table. Do not be intimidated by this. It's going to be super easy. So we're inside the uh, web version of SketchUp. SketchUp has a pro version, which you can download on your desktop. Um, but the web version is fine for all of this as well. So that's the one I'm in. And the first thing I'm going to do, I've got this uh, little arrow selected. That's our select tool. Every time I use a tool in here, I'm going to talk about the tool, tell you what it is, but I'm also going to tell you the shortcut to the tool. So you can use your keyboard to jump right to these tools. And while it seems like a lot to remember at first, as you get going, it will become so intuitive and almost without thinking about it, you'll just hit your keyboard to switch tools. So this select tool, the shortcut for it is spacebar on your keyboard. So I've got it selected. I'm going to click on this guy and I can just hit the delete or backspace on my keyboard. And if I delete something and I want to bring it back, I can always go back a step. If you're on a Mac, it's going to be command Z. If you're on Windows, it's control Z. So that's the select tool. One more thing I'll tell you about it is if I drag from right to left, it will select anything that's inside this box here. So because his head was inside the box, he was selected. But if I drag left to right, it only selects things that are completely in the box. So see that I've got his head in the box. It does not select him. But if I put him completely in the box, it does select him. So we'll move on. Um, we're going to click on this guy, hit delete on our keyboard. And then now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. The way that you do that, if you have a mouse, you can roll the mouse wheel. If you're on a laptop, you can put two fingers on your trackpad. And if I pull down, it zooms in. And if I push up, it zooms away. I'm going to hit R for the rectangle tool. You can find the rectangle tool right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right here where the red, green, and blue axis meet. I'm only going to click once. I'm not holding the click. I've just simply clicked once. And if I move this away, it starts to draw a square or rectangle. Now, um, if you look in the bottom right corner as I do this, the dimensions are down there. We can simply, before clicking again or doing anything, type in our dimensions. Now, since we're making this little coffee table, the first thing I'm going to make is a post. And I'm going to type in 3.5 comma 3.5. So that's three and a half inches by three and a half inches. So now we see how far we need to zoom in. So we don't have to select any other tool. We can just scroll on the trackpad or mouse to zoom in. And now I want to talk about orbiting before we build out this project. If you hit O on your keyboard, that's the orbit tool. You can find it right here. And that allows me just to move around just like this. So that's how you navigate between orbiting and scrolling in and out like this. You can get anywhere you want to be. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the toolbar and select this tool. We can just hit P, letter P on our keyboard. That's the push pull tool. And I'm going to hover over the face. Notice when I do that, there's all these little dots that tells me that I've got the face here. And I'm going to click once. And now I've got this attached here. I've only clicked. I'm not holding the click again. And um, again, if you look at the dimensions down there in the bottom right, it changes as I move this. And once again, I can just type in the dimensions I want. So I'm going to type in 18 and hit Enter. So now if I zoom out a little bit, we've got a post that is 3.5 by 3.5 and 18 inches tall. So this is our first post. Now um, what we're going to do is we're going to paint this post with uh, some material or color. So if you look over here, you've got materials. And we'll talk about some of these um, just a little bit. Most of the tools you'll be using are on the left toolbar here. And uh, materials gives us our colors and also actual materials, things that look like wood and siding and roofing and those sort of things. So if I scroll down here, I did go to the little search icon on the cube there. That's the browse icon. We're going to go to wood. And I'm just going to find one that I like. Uh, what you need to do is you can click on a face and paint the face. Or if I triple click this object, it selects everything. Now to bring up the paintbrush or it's the paint bucket, I'll hit B on my keyboard. So now when I click on one of these colors, I can just click on this and now it's painted it completely that color. So I'm going to click this to remove it. And if you want to hide all of these labels here, you can just click on these arrows and then you just hover over this right here and it will come back. We'll talk more about those. Actually, one more thing I will tell you about these. We'll go to styles right here. Click on that. 
and then uh, go to the little search icon there, go down to default styles, and now we've got the green grass blue sky look. So uh, that's one thing you can do. You can also go to shadows right here and turn that on. That turns on a shadow and you can change the uh, time of year or the time of day. Uh, if I were to pull on the time of day here, as the sun moves across the sky, it changes where the shadow would be. So um, you can do things like that. You can change a few more settings there. Um, that's all we'll talk about right there. We're going to keep building. So with my orbit tool, I'm moving around. And what I'm going to do is because we've got the castle joint that you saw in this coffee table, we're going to go ahead and make that. The easiest way to do that is probably to grab the tape measure, which is the letter T on your keyboard. I'm going to click on the edge here and I'm going to drag a little guideline here. I'm going to type in one space one slash eight. So that's one and one eighth. And then I'm going to do the same thing from this side over here. So one space one slash eighth. And again, I just clicked once and then typed in my dimensions. You don't have to hold the clicks or anything like that. And if we measure from here to here, it tells us it's one and one quarter. So because this is three and a half, I can't split it three ways or it would be one and one six. And tape measures don't show things in uh, sixths, right? They're eighths or sixteenths or 30 seconds or something like that. So um, I made this section one and one eighth, this section one and one eighth, and the middle section is one and one quarter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull one more line, grab that tape measure tool, that's T. I'm going to pull down right here. I'm going to type in 3.5, enter. So that's three and a half inches. Now, uh, these aren't actual lines, they're just guidelines. The way that we can trace these lines is we can hit L. And that's going to give us the line tool. I'm going to click right here at this intersection and come down to this one here. And when it's at an intersection, it shows that little X right there and then back to here. And so now we've traced that out and I can hit E. That's gonna give me the eraser tool. I'm gonna to erase these guidelines. I'm just clicking and holding and going through that. So we'll hit P for the push pull tool. And now I've got it on my little section here. I'm gonna cut this out. So I just started to move it a little bit. I'm gonna type in 3.5. And because this is three and a half inches wide, it's gonna blow it out like that. And we're gonna do the same thing on both sides here. So T for the tape measure tool one and one eighth do the same thing on this side do it again one and one eighth and then trace these out we can just uh, actually instead of bringing another guideline as i have the line tool here and i'm following this line i can type in 3.5 enter and then bring it across and right there hit p for the push pull tool because this is one and one eighth i can just type in one and one eighth again and it will blow that piece out and if it leaves a little piece like that, all you have to do is click on it. You've got the select tool, which is spacebar, delete the face, and then you'll need to click on this little line up here and delete that as well. You could also use the eraser tool. And so we're going to go to the other side and do this one more time and we'll have our first little castle joint. So another thing you could do, I guess you could take the eraser tool and erase these lines right here. And now I'm going to hit O for the orbit tool. We can just orbit around and see what we've got here, but we've got our little castle joint leg. So uh, we're going to make four of these, but we don't have to do that all over again. We're just going to copy this. So before I do that, I'm going to triple click it. Now let's talk about why we triple click things. That selects every single thing that's touching this, right? If I were to click once, it would select the face. If I click twice, it will select the face and the edges that touch that face. If I triple click, it's going to click I mean, it's going to select everything there, right? So with it fully selected, I'm going to right click. I'm on a Mac, so it's control click. I'm going to go to make component, and we're just going to call this post. You can call it whatever you want. Hit create, and now we have a component. So now if I click on it just once, it selects the whole thing. So this is a component now. If I move it around, it will move the whole thing. I don't have to triple click it first. So we have this component. We want to copy it four times. So what I'm going to do is click on it once. I'm going to hit M. M is our move tool, which you can find here. And if I were to click on this, I can move this around, right? Now, what I want to do before I move it is I'm going to hit Option. I'm on a Mac. And see how it gave me that little plus sign? Um, you're going to hit Control if you're on Windows. I'm on a Mac, so it's Option. And that gave me that little plus sign. That means when I move this, it's going to move a copy. And so I want from edge to edge 24 inches. 
Now, if I move this 24 inches, this edge is starting three and a half inches away from this edge. Uh, it would be a little too far. So what I want to do is subtract the three and a half here from 24. So I'm gonna move it, what is that, 20 and a half inches? So I'll type in 20.5, enter. And just to confirm, I'll take the tape measure here and I'll measure from here to here, make sure I did my math right. And down in the bottom corner, it says two feet. Let me get rid of these just to get them out of the way. So we have 24 inches across here. And now we're gonna move the other two pieces here. Again, I, I told you, you could drag from right to left and anything that touches the box will be selected. And remember, if you did it left to right, it would only select it if it's fully in the box, right? Another thing you can do is click on it once, hold shift and click again on the next piece. So we've got them both selected. Now we're gonna move again, we're gonna hit M for the move tool. We're gonna hit option to copy if you're on Mac, control if you're on Windows, and we're gonna move both of these. We've got them both selected, so both of them will copy when we move them, and we want them 48 inches apart, so from edge to edge. So again, we're gonna subtract this three and a half from 48, and that's gonna give us 44 and a half inches. So I'll start to move it. I'll type in 44.5, enter. So now, We've moved those across. And again, we can always double check ourselves. I'll take the tape measure, hit T, and I'll go edge to edge. And down in the bottom right corner, where our dimensions are shown, it says four feet, so that's 48 inches. So now we've got all four posts for our little castle joint coffee table. So now what we're gonna do is make the uh, beams that lock into these posts here. And so what I'm going to do is zoom in. I've got my orbit tool. I, that's the good thing about the zoom and orbit is like I like to get into the space I'm working. If I were doing some work in here, I'd like to get close to it. So I'm gonna get down here and what I'm gonna do is create this first beam that goes this way. So I'll hit L for the line tool. I could also use the rectangle tool, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw. now. I wanna say something, we're drawing off of this, but it won't connect to it and ruin your component because this is a component. If it weren't a component, everything would be connected where you can't really separate it without a little bit of extra work. So L for the line tool coming up on the blue axis. Notice when it's on the blue axis, it's up and down. If you go left and right, sometimes you can't find that blue axis. What you can do is hit the up arrow on your keyboard. Now, no matter what I do, it's locked on. And if I were to hit the left arrow on my keyboard, it would be locked on the green axis and right arrow would lock me onto the red axis. But let's hit the up arrow. We're locked into the blue axis. We're gonna type in 3.5, enter. So that's three and a half. And along the green axis, 3.5, come down to this corner and then connect these here. I'm gonna get on the other side of that here. So I'm gonna orbit around and come right back over here. Now, one thing I can do, since I'm going to paint everything, if you paint something before you use the push-pull tool, it will already, everything will come out painted. So I'm gonna hit B again. That's our paint bucket tool, right? And we're gonna go to wood and we're going to make, uh, we're gonna use this one. So it's a slightly different color than the other one. And I'll use a different color on the short beam too, and that way we can distinguish the components here. Um, but let's hit P for the push-pull tool. Actually, before we do that, uh, I'll get rid of this by clicking right there and get rid of those. So let's hit P for the push-pull tool, hover over the space, I'm gonna pull this out, and it needs to be 48 inches. So I'll type in 48, hit enter, and I can move away and see what's going on. Everything looks good. And then we're gonna come in here. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to cut this out so that it fits uh, in here. And if you don't know how a castle joint works, you'll know by the end of this video. I kind of chose this, I chose this project because a castle joint's pretty interesting little joint. The way we're gonna do this, take the tape measure. And just like before, we're gonna go one and one eighth, one and one eighth, enter. L for the line tool. We're gonna just trace these two lines here. And now I'm gonna take the push-pull tool and I'm going to move this back three and a half inches, 3.5, do the same thing here, 3.5. And now we've got a tenon right here, but there's still a few things we need to do to this tenon. Uh, we're gonna come over here, uh, T for the tape measure. We're gonna measure across this one and one eight. And then I can't pull a line like that off of a guideline. So if I click on this guideline and try to do it again, it makes a straight line. So what I wanna do is hit L for the line tool, trace this, and then T for the tape measure. And I'm gonna make this one one and one quarter. L for the line tool again, 
and then E for the eraser tool. I like to get rid of those guidelines when I'm working. P for the push pull tool, and I wanna bring this down half of three and a half inches, which is one and three quarters. So I'll just bring it down and type in 1.75, or I could type in one space three slash four, right? And so uh, that is what the end of this piece is gonna look like. We just need to do the same thing on the other side. And now we've completed our beam that goes across here. We have not locked it into the uh, post yet, but we'll do that. First, I'm gonna triple click it right click make component we'll call this one the long beam so we'll basically have a long beam and a short beam and um yeah so now i'll hit m for the move tool i'll just grab a corner here and i'll go down and type in 3.5 so now it's locked into my beam and we're going to have a uh, another beam lock into that but it's gonna be upside down. So you'll see how this works in just a second. But we need to move this over and copy it. So I have the move tool selected, that's M on my keyboard. I'm gonna hit option to copy or control on Windows, move this over. And remember, we've gotta subtract this three and a half inches from 48, so that gives us 44.5, enter. This is 24 inches across, not 44, that's the other way. So it needs to be 20.5. There it is, we've got those two beams. We're gonna do this one more time, only we're gonna do it upside down. We're gonna lock that in place. And um, yeah, so here we go. Line tool, you guys should probably have the hang of this by now or at least understand what's going on. So we're gonna type in 3.5, enter, come over 3.5, down to this corner, connect those. We'll come around to the other side because that's where we're gonna push and pull from. We'll hit B for the paintbrush first. Um, I'm gonna go to synthetic surfaces and choose this one that looks like wood right here. And then I'll just get rid of this like that. Hit uh, P for the push pull tool, bring this over 24 inches, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing as before, but a little bit different. We're going to hit T for the tape measure. Uh, one and one eighth, do it again, one and one eighth line tool trace those guidelines p for the push pull tool three and a half inches do it again three and a half inches and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out that notch again but this one needs to be upside down when i'm working like in this space here i'll just move my whole piece up in the air a little bit so if i triple click this i'm not going to make it a component yet because i'm still working on it um, i'm going to hit m though and because everything is selected here I can move this up, I'll just type in six. We'll go six inches. And we'll do the same thing that we are doing here. One and one eighth, line tool, do it again. Tape measure tool, one and a quarter in the center there. Line tool again, and then we're gonna notch that out. So I'll hit erase to erase those guidelines. P for the push pull tool, push this up, type in 1.75, because that's half of three and a half. And so that is our other notch here. We will cut out that same cut on the other side, copy it. Let's make this thing a component. We're gonna triple click it, right click or control click if you're on Mac. We'll call it short beam. And then now we need to move this down into here. Now let's talk about this castle joint real quick. If I click on both of these, I'm gonna click on this beam, click on this beam. I held shift in between that. Move tool and move these up. We'll go up six inches. If we look at what's going on here, We've got this little cross cut out in our castle. This is like the castle, that's why they call it a castle joint. And then if we look here, we've got a cross that's gonna lock into that. And then if we click on this one here and move it up, you can see that's how they fit together, right? So the um, notches go together there, making a little cross. So we'll move this down, 3.5, move that down six inches, and that is a castle joint. Uh, yeah, that's the basics. Uh, and, and, and just like anything else, you got to get into SketchUp and you've got to put some time into it for it to feel easy. Build a few things in SketchUp and then you'll be able to do it in your sleep, essentially. Like it's so easy to do. And so, um, yeah, that's the basics of woodworking in SketchUp. So thanks for watching. And if you're interested in learning more SketchUp, we've got, I don't know how many, 30, 40, 50 SketchUp tutorials on this channel, and we've got a lot more coming in the future. Depending on when you're watching this, we may have way more than that, right? So anyway, I won't keep you guys any longer. I hope that was helpful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you let me know in the comments or let me know what I did wrong or how I could have explained it better. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.